in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo et in terra pax omnibus boni voluntatis. Dear children of God, my sermon this Christmas morning will be a short one. I wish only that you should meditate in your hearts the deep meaning and mystery of our Mass on Christmas Day. For whenever Mass is said, we reenact the passion and death of our Lord. But on Christmas Day, we do this in celebration of his birth, so that at the same moment, we recreate his coming for the salvation of men and offer again to God his body and blood in sacrifice oblation and satisfaction in the sins of the whole world. It was the same night that had just passed that a multitude of heavenly hosts appeared before the shepherds at Bethlehem and said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to his men of good will. And at the same time, at that year, we celebrate the birth of our Lord and his passion upon the cross. Beloved, as the world sees, this is too strange to behave in such a fashion. For who in the world would mourn and rejoice for the same reason? For either joy will be overborne by mourning, or mourning will be cast out by joy. So, it is only on these, our Christian mysteries, that we can rejoice, and once for the same reason. Now think for a moment about this word, peace. Does it seem strange to you? that the angels should have announced peace when ceaselessly the world has been stricken by war and fear of war? Does it seem strange to you that the angelic voices were mistaken and that the promise was a disappointment and a lie? Reflect now how our Lord himself spoke of peace and said to his disciples, My peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Did he mean the peace as we think of it? The kingdom of England at peace with his neighbors? The barons at peace with the king? The householder counting over his peaceful gains? The swept hearth? The best wine for a friend at the table? His wife singing to the children? Those men, his disciples knew no such things. They went forth to journey afar, to suffer by land and sea, to know torture, imprisonment, disappointment, and suffer death by martyrdom. What did he then mean? If you ask that, remember, then he also said, not as the world gives to you. <coughs> so then, he gave his disciples peace, but a peace not that the world gives. Consider also one thing which you have probably never thought. Not only do we, at the Feast of Christmas, celebrate at once our Lord's birth and his death, but on the next day we celebrate the martyrdom of his first martyr, the Blessed Stephen. Is it an accident, do you think, that the day of the first martyr follows the birth of Christ? By no means. Just as we mourn it once in the birth and the passion of our Lord, so also in a smaller figure we both rejoice and mourn in the death of the martyr. We mourn for the sins of the world that has martyred them. We rejoice that another soul is numbering among the saints in heaven for the glory of God and the salvation of men. Beloved, do we not think of a martyr simply as a good Christian who has been killed for simply being a Christian? Nay, that would be solely to mourn. Do we not think of him as simply a good Christian who has been elevated to the company of saints? Nay, for that would be simply to rejoice. And neither our mourning nor rejoicing as the world is. A Christian martyrdom is never an accident. For saints are not made by accident. Lesser still is a Christian martyrdom for the effects of a man's will to become a saint. As a man, willing and contriving, may become a ruler of men, a martyrdom is always the design of God 
for his love of men, to warn them and to lead them, to bring them back to his ways. It is never the design of man, for a true martyr, he is to become an instrument of God. For he has given his will up to the will of God, and who no longer desires anything for himself, not even the glory of being a martyr. So thus, as on earth, the church mourns and rejoices at once in a fashion that the world cannot understand. So in heaven, the saints are most high, having made themselves most low, and are seen, not as we see them, but in the light of the Godhead from which they are being. I have spoken to you today, dear children of God, of the martyrs of the past, asking you to remember especially our martyr of Canterbury, the blessed Archbishop Elfidge, because it is fitting on Christ's birthday, to remember it is the peace which he bought. Also, dear children, I do not think I shall ever preach to you again, and because it is possible that, in a short time, you may have yet another martyr, and that one, perhaps, may not be the last. I would have you keep in your heart the words that I say, and think of them at another time. In omni patri, et fili, et spiritus sancti. Amen. Yeah.